On today's show, we review Grant Morrison's epic finale to Batman Incorporated. And Simon Oliver and Robbie Rodriguez give us some brand new sci-fi with Collider No. 1. And we check in with Barry Allen for the second week in a row with The Flash Annual Number 2. So, after... 13 issues, yeah. I don't even know how many months it's been. Well, no, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Let's go back even further than that. Let's go back. Oh, the, shit, yeah. Since Batman and Son, so this is basically the conclusion of Grant Morrison's epic Batman story. Seven years this mm-hmm. Batman story's been going. This is the final issue. Yeah. Um, Batman finally faces off with Talia, if you've been keeping up. If you've not, this review's kind of pointless. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so this is Batman Inc. finally going up against Leviathan. What did you think of this conclusion? You've been heavily invested in this story. Your boy, God rest, has has passed mm. away in this book. It's been an emotional roller coaster for you. So has it paid off in the final issue? Well, I mean, it, it's it's kind of strange because this issue feels really like a wrap up of everything, as opposed to a wrap up of Batman Incorporated, and I've read everything. Yeah. Every Grant Mar- everything Grant Morrison has written uh, as part of his you know six seven year stint on mm. Batman, um, I have read, and so this feels like a conclusion to all of that. In many ways, the Batman Incorporated Volume Two story is the conclusion to his run. That's how mm. big and epic it is. It says epic on the cover. That is what it is. Yeah. Um, and I just thought this was just tremendous. Um, I, Grant Morrison has just a perfect understanding of comics. I think the Ouroboros metaphor, which we see again, mm. displayed wonderfully on a just fantastic double page spread. Um, you know, it w- is a perfect sort of metaphor for Grant Morrison having started having gone right around and then really to start to leave the universe sort of how he left it. Mm. Perhaps there's something at the end that... um, It's a very generous story. That's the other thing I was going to say. He leaves just enough for the writers to take if they want. They don't have to. He's he's built it up and I I think they'd be silly not to take it because it's horrendously creepy and I think it would be a great story to tell. Um... But you know, it's generous. It doesn't leave like isn't writers in the uh, in the lurch like I think mm. Jeff Johns did uh, with his Green Lantern run. He sort of did everything, and then they were just like, "But this, oh, oh, thanks, Johns." Yeah, but yeah, this I think is a very generous way to end the story. <laughs> it's masterfully told. Um, the the writing's beautiful. It it has um, just like when we read the Damien's death issue. Yeah. Um, it it has flashbacks and little bits of writing and there's a great conversation between Bruce and Gordon where we you know it's it's a whole history of things that have happened mm. like when we read the Damien issue and they look back on their time and where they have their conversation and we yeah. remember the early Batman and Robins which of course is included in all of this as well um so it really really did feel like a completely and wholly satisfying end to this story for me. And what's more, I knew it was going to be that going in. Mm. It's the first book I read when I had, you know, when I bought my stack of comics and I knew it was going to be solid. I knew that Grant Morrison completely knew inside out the story he was telling mm. and this feels like that to me, so I loved it. Um, I'm, I'm a little bit different to your review. Okay. Uh, I, I was looking for a big epic finale and what I felt like I got was kind of a muddle of stuff that I wasn't very bothered with uh, wasn't really that interested in and I don't know it just kind of it just kind of fizzled by the end for me I mean you're right the ending is this very is creepy. basically an epilogue though like the the big epic stuff was the last last issue with the man bat and the going off against the Damien thing and this and it's fighting in the rain and there's, there's yeah. children on the streets and there's war like if you were reading this in a trade 
Like you'd have that, I'm sure you'd like have that big better. epic battle finally, yeah. and then this is more of your epilogue. This is let's look back over where we've been, kind of issue. Yeah, but unfortunately, because it is the conclusion, it is the final book. I do kind of judge it on that merit that I'm looking for something big and something wow to end on, and I just didn't get that. You know, it kind of ended the way I, I assumed it would end because it's a comic book and it. it you know, yeah, again, the the epilogue is creepy, and you're right, I hope someone does run off of that. That'd be great with Snyder. Snyder do one of Snyder's hands, that'd be fantastic. Um, there was a really good reference in here when Jim Gordon's talking to Bruce Wayne, and he's like, oh, I've not seen Gotham like this in zero years. That's year. what I'm saying, that's like, what I'm saying oh. about it being generous, like it just feeds into everything else, it but ties I like that, everything but... up. It's just, I feel like it's so controlled, this issue. This just fizzled for me. It just, really? it kind of just, pair. Um, which has kind of been my opinion on half the issues of this. Like, half of them are, for me, Grant Morrison is either on his A game or, sorry. And this one, unfortunately for me, was, it's all right. I mean, again. I feel like you feel differently if you're reading this in trade. I'm trauma. almost positive I would because you're reading a whole story you're not having to wait. Like, I I would have been so disappointed if it was, if we'd have ended last week because as someone who's read all of these, you know, hundred yeah. strong issues, I needed something like this to it's sort of a look back. Like, it's for me to just mm. sort of, yeah, I remember that. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Oh, yeah, God, that's how that fits yeah. in there. And, feels like the final piece of the puzzle for me. Yeah, I mean, I think maybe I built up expectations and they just weren't met. Um, but, you know, as a whole story, I have really enjoyed it. I don't think it's the monumental Batman story that Grant Morrison was after. In, I mean, I'm sure in the retrospective of the whole, his whole run, but that will never be considered a classic story arc because... It's too big. That's like saying well, Neil Adams' run on Batman was they could, a classic story I think story they'd arc. probably they'll bring an omnibus out. Oh, I'm sure. And I'm sure. Although Jeff bring... Johns is first in line for that. That's very. They owe him his first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, cool. So that's that's what we think of Batman. All right. Let's talk about another. The next book we're going to talk about is a brand new title. For, oh God, who publishes this? Vertigo. Vertigo Comics. Uh, Simon Oliver and Robbie Rodriguez, and it is essentially. What if the laws of physics broke? No, not necessarily broke, but what if we found out that they weren't as uh, solid of laws as we think they are? That they didn't have to be, that there were ways that they could change mm. and that we could possibly make use of them. And then what if we took the, that, you know, yeah. being on the brink of that 50 years time were that's just a thing. Yeah. Where physics aren't stable, where reality, you know, can change and alter so much so that you have a task force specifically designed for when things like that do happen. Yeah. So it's an interesting, you know, sci-fi concept that I was immediately interesting, I think, mm. uh, to me. So how did the comic uh, handle that concept? So this book for me was, it was running along, it was kind of introducing the concept. The moment for me where it just completely won me over was 911, what's your emergency, <laughs> uh, police, fire, ambulance or physics. I was like, yes, love it. I'm in as Jim, let's go. And yeah, I really enjoyed this book. Mm -hmm. I thought the writing was great. Really cool characters in there. I like our lead guy. He seems like someone who I'm going to be rooting for. Um, you know, there's some interesting backstory there with his dad and, um, you know, a lot of... Room. Uh, yeah, a lot of room and you get the office politics, which I quite like and things like that. Um, and then on the, you know, other side of the writing, the artwork, I loved it. It, it reminded me a lot of Chew by Rob Gilroy. Mm -hmm. um, but with almost a more sketchy style, like Chew's very polished for what it is. This is this is more sketchy and has a bit more flair to it, I suppose, because of the physics bending, and I absolutely love that. Yeah, um, I think this is a great issue, and I really do think people should go and pick it up. Yeah, I agree. I had one of those moments where it was like I didn't even. A lot of time when I'm I'm reading these comics, I'm thinking about mm -hmm. what I'll say and how I review it, yeah. and sort of I'm thinking it from a critical standpoint. But I just read this. 
Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I had to, I was just, oh, I've just read a comic book. And I didn't really, <laughs> I didn't really oh. even, you know, you just complete, I just lost myself in yeah. it and I just wasn't even conscious of anything else and I was just reading the story. Yeah. Um, and I was just so into it. And yeah, there's so much uh, room to play here. There's so much things to do. Like they established the past, future things straight away. So there's things that could have gone on. Like, God, it's, it's anyone's guess, but as a first issue, so solid, mm. hits all the right points. The characters are interesting. They appear to have depth. You just can't have some more. Like it's if you're into sci-fi and you're into good yeah. comics, I think I think it this... was image quality number one. This book it was great, mm-hmm. absolutely great. Okay, the last book we are talking about is the Flash Annual number two. We talked about the Flash last week, and the yeah. reason we're talking about it this week is because when we're looking through the comics, and I read the premise of this. You know, Flash, Green Lantern team up, first time they ever met. It just seemed like a really fun, light-hearted book, and I yeah. thought it would be good to read. So what did you think? Uh, I thought this was a fun, light-hearted book, and it was good to read. Um, it's... I, th- I think The Flash was written a lot better in this book. Uh, different writer. It's... it's Brian... I think it's the guy Shiletto, that usually... Who's co-writing it yeah. with... Francis Manipold at the moment he took, uh, took the reins yeah uh, I think he did a fantastic job on his own with this the artwork was solid um, you know maybe not as flashy as Francis Manipold's hey accidental puns um, but yeah so I, I really enjoyed that there's a beautiful uh, full page spread where the Flash and Green Lantern are back to back which I loved um it, and, and it's very consistent of the art style of Francis Manipal. Uh Really reminds me a lot of it still. Yeah, it was just good fun. I mean, if you just want to jump in on a book, jump in on it. And the way they wrote Hal Jordan, it's brilliant. Because when we read uh, issue 21 of Green Lantern for the show, you know, he's very serious in it. He's very, I'm Green Lantern, I'm, you know, I'm mm. the projector and da da in this, I felt like I was reading uh, Five Lies Mal Reynolds. You know, it felt like how... Uh, Nathan Nathan his voice, voice was in my it. head. It I can't there. get his voice the out right, of my head yeah, now. Yeah, it was there. Um, which was so good yeah. and so great. And that's that's just a testament of the writing and how good it was. And we'll talk more of, about that on Wednesday. Ah! And then, what? And then the... Uh, <laughs> The, the backup story as well, I can't remember who did that, but it was it was a solid backup as well. Mm. So I think annuals are a bit more expensive, but with this one, you definitely get your money's worth. Yeah, I didn't really like it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed it though. I no, did. it's all right. It was just like, I think I'm done with the flash for a bit now. I yeah. think we've <laughs> double dipped and I think that's just enough. It's, it's just snapped. too much. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it is. It just isn't gripping me. And I really missed Francis Manipal's art. And I just didn't love the story too much. It didn't really... just didn't really click for me. I do like the idea, some of the ideas going on of, like, Hal coming back before his new serious job that he's got to take on and just having, like, you know, a good kind of buddy oh, cop thing adventure. going on. Yeah. Like, it's a really nice premise. And... I don't know, maybe too much alien. I don't know what it was. I just it just fell a little bit flat for me. But it, it you know, it's not bad. It's easy to read. Part of me wishes that like if you've got a Batman Superman book, can we not have a Green Lantern Flash book? Just a like, Green Lantern Flash book in the book. right hands could be perfect. Yeah. And th- that's been done in the past as well. Yeah. I'm like I just I, I want more team up books that's not the Justice League. Like it's too big of a team. S- superior Spider Man team up, that's what we're that was the yeah, boy. really good. Really good. <laughs> All right, cool. That is all from us today. Yeah. Uh, you know, we reviewed three books Did. that came out this week. Thought there are a lot more books. Just including the Batman book, Batman Annual Number 2. Yeah, that came out which week. I haven't read. I've got it, but I haven't read it yet. I read it. Um, any good? It all right, yeah. Quick review. Uh, so what did you think of Batman Annual Number 2? Put it down in the comments below. Also tell us on Twitter, at Comic Book Show 1. Indeed. And what else have we got coming up this week? On Wednesday, we are talking the Flashpoint Paradox. We're going to be reviewing that for you. Yep. And then on Friday, the highly anticipated <laughs> by one person, <laughs> best sure. of the month. We'll see you then. I'm in as Jim. Let's go.